Welcome to Rugby I'm here on Free Sports, back once again, another week, Jonesy, back in the studio, and we've got the presence of the great man tonight, the proper legend. One of my heroes growing up, the big Adrian Morley, when I signed for Leeds as a young kid, he was there knocking everybody's head off. In an era when you was allowed to do it, it was a little bit different, and we'll ask him a little bit about that later on. Also, Paul Wood back, you love that one, would you? Back here. Yeah, uh, good to be back again, uh, really enjoyed it last week with Mickey, and good to see another teammate here in Mozza. What would we like to play with the great man? Same as Jonesy, you know, when I was in at the Warrington Academy, I used to watch Mozza uh, play for Leeds, so when I got the chance to play with him, you know, it was it was awesome. Like, for me, him and JP, best props uh, to ever play in Super League for me. Moz, life's a little bit different now, obviously. At Leeds last year, coaching, you decided to step away from the game. How's everything going without rugby in your life? Yeah, it's, it's going really well. Uh, I discovered coaching wasn't for me, and... That journey on the M62 definitely wasn't for me, so <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm I'm having a break from the sport. I'm, I'm working for Frameworks Recruitment, and that's you know we supply in, in the construction game. We can, so can supply any role in in the north of England, so it's very different. But I'm enjoying the break all the same. Mate, looking forward to this year. Are you going to be pulling your boots on again as well? We're going to speak later on in the show about the War of the Roses representing Lancashire because you've got to wrong the rights. <laughs> Yes, I'm looking forward. It was a, f a fantastic game, a fantastic, uh, um, you know, to get the boots on again with a load of ex-teammates and not a load of ex-opponents was, was fantastic. Great crowd and, uh, you know, we all said after the game how much of an enjoyable experience it was. So uh, I'll be doing that again. Can't wait. Do you still get to watch much rugby now, Moz, now that you're not obviously as involved? I know when you went to uh, Australia, you are a, like a demigod over there. I've walked through streets with you and I've seen the way that Aussies react to you. Have you ever thought about maybe doing a bit of punditry or maybe in Oz as well? Yeah, I mean, I was just over in Australia with the World Cup and I did a little bit of, of work with uh, Channel 7. I enjoyed it, you know, that, that side of the of the game. So uh, nothing's out of the question, but at the moment I'm, I'm happy to have a break. When you've done something for as long as I have, it's nice to just have a break and get my weekends back. In fact, I went watching your game where Warrington uh, against Leeds, the first game of the season. It was great just to be there as a fan, don't, don't have any roles and just enjoyed it for what it was. So I'm enjoying just being a fan again now. Right, Moz, we thought we'd start with some Moz memories of your time playing obviously here in, in England and in the NRL. Where's the best club you've played with, best team you've played with? Uh, tough, tough question. That. I'd probably say probably the Sydney Roosters just because it was, you know, the other side of the world, very exciting time of my life. And, and that team we had there in uh, 2003, I'd, I'd probably say was the best team I played in over there. We come to England. Uh, played Saints in the World Club Challenge, give them a good hiding, and and just that year we, we was on fire, and that was probably personally that was probably my my finest year as a player, just on top of my game. Uh, we didn't actually win the grand final. We made the grand final, but we didn't actually win. Uh, Penrith beat us in the in the grand final, but but that year was uh, a pleasure to, to to play with them boys. Mate, you dished out a few hidings in your time. You were the the enforcer both here and obviously in the NRL. But what's the best hit in your opinion you ever dished out? The most satisfying hit was, uh, I remember we played uh, New Zealand Warriors and Alan Guttenbeel, who I'd played against for, for club and country, was, you know, was a great player, great lad. But he flew out the line, he was offside for a start, but he flew out the line offside and absolutely banjoed uh, Ned Caddick, but then stood over him and gave him the verbal. So I thought it was disrespectful. And then the next game we played him, I said to the forwards before the game, right, first one to get him. And I was the first one to get him, and uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was a great, great shot, and uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, very rewarding. Well, I've got to ask you your style of tackle, a little bit like Sonny Bill when you watch some of his big hits. As the game's gone on, there's a little less of that now because there's a bit of shoulder charge, and you're allowed to get away with it. Now, first of all, you had to deal with that at a young age. You had a nerve problem in your shoulder, which restricted the amount of movement or the, the muscle in there. Just tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, I was I was 14 year old and uh, I went in for a tackle and uh, it was the opponent's knee hit me right on the uh, right on the shoulder and it crushed the nerves. If, if a nerve gets cut or damaged, it does repair itself. But if you crush it, it doesn't repair itself. So uh, on one side, my deltoid didn't develop. 
so it's restricted movements and it looks really funny when I've got a vest on on the beach so uh, so I had to contend with that but um, th th there was an operation they could have done where they take a nerve from your, your ankle and, and like a nerve transplant essentially but they said look you've got to where you're having your career now it can't be doing you that much damage we'll just leave it because it, it leaves terrible scarring and the success rate's not great so, so I've had that but because it's all numb you know, I've clocked a few people with that, and because I don't, because I don't, because I don't feel the pain. Uh, yeah, so th that's my secret weapon, really. So I've not, not told anyone that. So you just uh, mentioned that. Uh. Moz, you've uh, obviously played with some great players, but out of all those players, in your opinion, who's the greatest player you've ever taken the field with? Well, I was very fortunate. Uh, my hero growing up was Ellery Handler, and uh, my, my debut for for Leeds, I come off the bench, and. Um, I played only played about ten minutes with uh, Ellery, and then then he come off injured, and that's the only only chance I got to play with him. But to to say you know played played in the same you know I was on the field at the same time as my hero. And in my opinion, the greatest player, or certainly the greatest English player who's ever played the game. So uh, being a young kid, then I didn't realise what an influence he had. Obviously, a tremendous player, but what an influence he had on the rest of the players, the way he spoke, the way he carried himself, just just a legend. And uh, I was only with him for about uh, about five or six weeks, but I learned so much from him. And you know, when I see him now, uh, give him a big hug, and uh, he's uh, he's a legend, as you say. Obviously, at the moment, we're seeing the punishment of some different incidents, like the Liam Watts headbutt, and obviously, Jones, you were up how many times last year? Three two, or four? Two or three. I've only had four in my career. Two or three I've, last year. I've been up there, sat red all about four times in my career, and three of them were in the last sort of 18 months. Do you think the game's going a bit soft? What's your, what's your opinion, the legend? I do, but I don't want to sound like a, a dinosaur who, you know, it was great in my day, but I do think it's gone a bit soft. It is a, a contact sport, a collision sport, and sometimes you've just got to let the boys... Uh, deal with it themselves and uh, you know when you just throw a punch at someone and you get an instantly get a game ban I think that's uh, taking a bit too far but that's just just my opinion bring back the biff what do you reckon Jonesy would you would you bring it back the shoulder charge I you know I'm probably with Moz as somebody who's played it I think we all accept what it is it's a gladiatorial game and that's what we like playing like you want to feel like a warrior and you want to feel like you're going into a war that's what you enjoy that's where you get the gratification from that said I have got four potential boys will go on and, watch and play the game and I, I want it to be a safe environment and we want people to bring the kids as well so it's, yeah. it is safe yeah. we've got to have those measured risks I think and make it as safe as it can be but we still don't want to lose that, that oomph behind the game yeah, I don't think the, the shoulder charge there was a, a profound issue with the shoulder charge there weren't you know X amount of players injured because of the shoulder charge that's what made our game better and, and different from other sports and I don't, I don't, I don't know why they got rid of it I really don't. You know, if you look at Sonny Bill Williams, you know, some of the shots he used to put on, that's what the crowd used to go and see him when he put that on. You know, it lifted the crowd, lifted his teammates, and uh, I think we're missing that. Sam Burgess is another one who was, who was fantastic at it. So I think I think we're missing that, but it'd be, it'd be tough now to bring it back into, into the sport. One of the toughest blokes who runs a really tough culture in the game is Sean Wayne from Wigan. One of the best stories I've heard since we've done rugby M is from Maurice Bamford. Do you remember that story, Jonesy? I do. Wigan are very tough, very robotic. They, they remind me of little Terminators, if you've seen the film. They can't be bargained with, they can't be reasoned <laughs> with, and they just keep coming. And a lot of that's down to Sean Wayne. And yeah, really quickly, Maurice Bamford talks about a great story where uh, the young Sean Wayne was playing in a game, I think, against... 17-year-old OKR. Against OKR, yeah. and he was giving him a bit of a warning. Go do your job, lad, but don't mix it with the big fellas. And he mentioned one of them spe specifically... And uh, Sean Wayman just went on and knocked him out. Simple as that, 17-year-old. First, first scrum. First scrum, get on with it, all the very best. Right now, let's go over and find out about Sean Wayne's hard as nails as he tells us the top five competitors he's faced off to. I'm Sean Wayne, head coach of Wigan Warriors. The five toughest opponents I've ever played against is, the first one is Kevin Tamater, who played for Windis. Um, He's a boxing champion in New Zealand and I didn't know that when I was a young lad. I was, I was a little bit angry myself and I clashed with him a few times and he always come off second best. So, uh, without a doubt, uh, Kevin Tamati is the toughest. Another one was a bloke on Mark Broadest, who, a Kiwi, played, played at uh, Ulkiston Rovers, front rower. Very tough, uncompromising front rower, very, very hard to handle and uh, I come off second best to him as well. Um, number three uh, was, was at Warrington, a bloke called Carl Webb. Anuka, very, very tough 
angry competitor. Uh, he's another one will beat me. Um, another one was at, was, at, was at Warrington with Les Boyd. A front row were very, very aggressive. Um, loved to fight with everybody. And, um, and we had some run games. Wigan and Warrington, it was, it was at it. The referees weren't too strict and you could... Um, we had some real tough, tough games against them. And I, I won one, I lost one against him. And my, and my fifth one is a, is a bloke when I was a kid. Um, it was a bloke who played at Workington and I was a young kid playing for Wigan. And a bloke called Bill Patterson. And um, my first game at Workington, he, he tackled me. Um, he come flying in, knocked me unconscious, and he broke his own cheekbone. And, uh, and it, I went up to, to, up to Workington and saw him a few years, a few years ago, and, and he still remembered it. You know, I'm, I, and I remember being carried off the field unconscious and, he, and watching him come off with a broken cheekbone jaw. Everything was smashed in. So Bill Patterson at Workington is my fifth one. Kevin Salmon say coming out on top there for Sean Wayne. Moz, you uh, you told us a bit of a story about that man. Yes, he uh, when he was playing for New Zealand against the Aussies, they both got Simbin. There was him and a bloke called Greg Dowling, front row. I think he was hooker. Tammy, or I think he played a bit of hooker and prop. But as they were both getting Simbin, it kicked off again on the touchline, and it was uh, it went from a referee's matter to a police matter. But these two big. Uh, animals going at it and it was uh, vintage stuff and it's gone down in, in folklore in uh, in Australia. Right, on screen now is this week's results. Jonesy, you just got the win on Friday night. If it had gone on another five minutes, who knows? Uh, very tough, but I'd like to flip that on its head, mate, because we had a great start and uh, that's really important. Uh, still a few lads missing, but look, all are a fantastic side and uh, we really needed to win having been uh, away from Edinburgh for so long. It was our first game back there, and uh, the two points at this stage of the season is invaluable. Did it feel weird because obviously the South Stand were kind of a third full, and yeah. then the temporary stand they done well to get it up. It looked looked all right. I was surprised. Yeah, I put it over the top here. I've got one of my favourite photographs of all time. Uh, me getting old in one corner and, and just a nice bright South Stand. And what really stood out for me is how bright it is. In the, yeah. in the past, the South Stand's always been a bit of a, a dark hole of noise. It's like got the power of a black hole as well out in space. And whilst the South Stand's not there in form yet, certainly the crowd are still uh, in, in spirit. So uh, great crowd and uh, it was a decent game. Fortunate to hang on. Starting in the Championship though, Woody, another defeat. How is life at Lee? He must be tough. Oh, it's, uh, we're struggling, we're struggling at the minute and uh, what's frustrating is it's been the best pre-season I've been involved in so I'm going into my third year now as a, as a staff member and it's been the best pre-season and we went into the start of the season with all these new players and high expectations and it's just not, not come off of us. Um, you know, we're really, really low on confidence at the minute and, uh, you know, we, we've just got to, I said it last week, we've, we've just got to keep working hard and uh, hopefully come through the other side but... You know, it's a, it's a big task now to get in the top four. London, there's no stopping them. Danny Ward's by my army, smashing Batley. And Batley are in good form. They'd won three from four. And London look unstoppable at the moment. Yeah, I think uh, we was expecting London as well to be at the, you know, in the position we in, really, because, you know, they lost uh, Henderson as the coach. They lost um, a couple of players. Andy Ackers. Andy Ackers, uh, the young halfback. And, you know, they... They they've started really really well and you know full credit to Danny Ward he's, he's he looks like he's he's built a team though that's playing with you know a lot of confidence. Jonesy, we've got to we've got to mention it, mate. I'm sorry, I do I wasn't going to do it for you, but you had a bit of a shocker on Saturday. Do you want to tell the world what happened <laughs> for Rugby M live launch? A fantastic day, Mayfield versus Egremont. And uh, everyone arrived on time, apart from you. I set off early as well. I don't. I just don't like being beat. I never have been uh, since four year old. And my sat nav took me up this farmer's path, and it got narrower and narrower until it came to a grass field. And I could see the floodlights in the ground in the background. I thought it's only around the corner. I'll, I'll make it. It's all downhill. Anyway, long story short, I didn't make it. I was stuck in in uh, some mud. And what do you do when you're stuck inside at motorway and your car's broke down? You've got a, an idea. <laughs> but I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I need a farmer to pull me out. Well, where are you going to find one of them? I was so lucky that the farmer's uh, wife, she uh, she sent her teenage sons out who basically tried to pull me out with a massive quad. It was a massive quad and I thought, go on, let's have a go. And they basically just dragged me into a barbed wire fence <laughs> and uh, it cut through my car door like a tin opener and there's no paint on it anymore. And then to, to add insult to injury, when you're in that state where you just want to start crying, I got over and leant on the fence to look at the damage and fence electrocuted me. So I was wounded, mate. But 
we got it out. We in got the it end. there in the end. Big thanks to yeah. Farmer who pulled me out. He was an outstanding guy. And you know what? I offered him some money, and he went, "No, we're all rugby league family. I'm a rugby league man as well." So top guy, Thank top you. fella. Right now, as Wagger goes to Wigan, we see Danny Kermond in action for Wakefield. So we thought we'd go and meet him and find out about his interests in getting to know you. Danny Kermond, Wakefield Trinity, back rower. Uh, my hero, probably from watching uh, as a kid, I'd say uh, Brendan Tooter. He used to play for, well, he played for Fever Rovers. I supported them as a kid, and he was just a really aggressive uh, loose forward, and they called him the babyface assassin. So I loved watching him, and I actually got a chance to meet him. He came over with uh, Anthony Tupo a couple of years ago and had a night out with him, so that was good. A bird watcher. <laughs> uh, no, I used to. I wanted to be a teacher. I started at university uh, when I was part time with, with Fev before I went full time, and uh, I was doing PE at Leeds Uni, and obviously put that on hold. Uh, but I had no clue what I want to do after rugby. Kind of trapped in a bubble when you're doing it. You just forget about everything else. So yeah, just uh, loving life at minutes. So probably a PE teacher. Uh, Man United, um, yeah, it's not too popular around here. Um, I've never really followed football too much, to be honest, and my cousin got a season ticket for United and started going with him a couple of times and just love the atmosphere. Uh, but I, <laughs> I don't really mention it much, but my missus is half Japanese, uh, so yeah, <laughs> um, just love Japanese food. Uh, been lucky enough to go over there a couple of times. Um, at the tuna markets and having the fish straight off there is uh, just amazing and yeah, probably Japanese. <laughs> We're a Citroen AX, uh, a green one. I weren't lucky enough, well, I was lucky. My mum and dad taught me the right way. I had to save up for my own car and I got a green Citroen AX, 200 quid it cost me. It had four gears and one windscreen wiper. I didn't have much street cred there, rolling around in that, but yeah, I loved it. I'd love to find it and buy it back now. Uh, Kez, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I love it. Old old school Yorkshire film. Uh, just absolutely has me in stitches all the way through. Um, the scene where they get caught smoking cigs and Headmaster gets them in there. It's got to be one of the best scenes ever in a movie. I've gone, I've gone back a bit actually. I've, I've been having uh, Mumford and Sons on um, their playlist, just listening to their songs over and over. But I like all sorts really. If, if you listen to, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't dare put it on actually, Jim. I wouldn't dare put my playlist on Shuffle. I've got some, some really up there stuff and some really down there stuff. You know, it depends what mood you're in for me. It was great to win a Challenge Cup semi-final with uh, Uddersfield. That that was a really good occasion. Um, you know, probably uh, one that's a bit a bit good but bad at the same time with the million pound game you know just securing the club's future in that it were a, a really good moment um, but probably just uh, when I came back to Wakefield the first game that I got as captain that's probably the proudest I've been as a, as a rugby player having all my family there watching me lead out my hometown club. Uh, my worst were definitely the uh, week before the Challenge Cup final with Huddersfield um, you know, I just did a sidestep and ruptured my cruciate ligament the week before Wembley, so that was a tough week having to uh, sit there and watch when you know you could be out there playing. Uh, all the family and all the local villagers from Charleston had all bought the tickets to, to go down. I just you know felt like I'd let everyone down and, and myself as well. It's an up and down interview, isn't it? <laughs> 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 uh, they get a tough one, you meet so many good blokes and uh, you know there's uh, some guys that are right laugh uh, but I'd probably say Jacob Miller spent quite a bit of time with him uh, away from the away from the field um, his missus didn't come back from Australia so I, he adopted me as his uh, partner for for the off season um, but yeah I spend a lot of time with Milky and Dave Fafia tries to tag on a bit as well
I'll just go Superman, I reckon. I'm not really into comic books and that too much, but Superman's a smart guy, in he? Looks, you know, looks the part in his normal gear and then saves the day in, uh, in his uh, Lycra. Uh, probably, oh, it would be Coldplay at the Man City ground. Um, just for a full show, it was an un unreal spectacle, really. I definitely recommend going to see them, yeah, they're uh, class gig. <laughs> I'm gonna get some armor for this, but Coronation Street. <laughs> I uh, I don't miss, don't never miss a corner. Um, you know the the missus works away quite a bit, so I have to stockpile them and catch up when she gets back. I did about four hours yesterday, and it's on fire at the minute with Pat Feel and storyline. I just can't get enough. I keep trying to get Keegs to get me some uh, inside knowledge off Anthony Cotton, but. He never comes with any goods, and I've, I've been trying my hardest to just—I just want one pint in Rovers or a game of darts or something with Kev, and you know, get on as an extra. But I still haven't took the bait yet. So um, if anyone's watching, come on, give us a gig. Yeah, that'd be up there, but the presenter's a bit annoying, like. <laughs> 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 Your bird of prey centre. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been Maldives. I've, uh, I, went, I got lucky enough to go there. That's a lovely place. Um, you know, I'd like to do a bit of snorkeling and all that, and it's just lovely water. But I went travelling in off season this time and found myself, as they say, yeah. Um, you know, just went to Thailand and did a bit of island hopping, and yeah, just an awesome experience. That uh, cheap as well. So yeah, I'd probably go to Thailand because I'm a tight Yorkshireman. in a fire um, I can remember who, this is embarrassing as well he once got sent off playing for Widness down here at Feven I were, I were only a young lad like and uh, I'd, I'd come just to watch him I was that excited to see him play and uh, he got red carded and I started crying like to my dad because he had to go off <laughs> I'll give you two um, Epworth Gallery, you want to just go for a coffee or a little brunch, get yourself in there, lovely coffee and uh, lovely breakfast as well, a good friend of mine's the, the chef in there, he's been on MasterChef, uh, quality grub in there and I'll say Iris as well, they uh, cook local produce, uh, they use a local butcher in, uh, in there as well and the food's just awesome, good, uh, good old English food in there, nice. Kermo there, I love it. The first thing he'd buy with a lottery win, the York Bird of Prey Centre. What a legend. Outstanding. Right, we go over to Hull now and see how those guys get on, playing you out into the break. It's a Hull FC What Bike Challenge. <laughs>
Welcome back here, part two, Rugby AM. Straight into the social, Jonesy, social media. Danny Bruff extended his contract to Huddersfield. I mean, the thing I like about Danny Bruff is his career. You know, he's had his ups and downs. He's played in some lower league teams, had some fantastic moments, and now he's the expert at what he does. Uh, Castleford appointing John Wells as director of rugby, as uh, Steve Gill stands down as CEO. I really like Steve Gill, but I'm not sure why it's come about. It's John really... Wells? Yeah, it's... Um... Unusual, really. I, I, I'm, it depends what what the role involves. You know, does director of rugby is it player recruitment? You know, what 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 type of role is he going to fill though? Let's go over now to Wigan as Wagger heads over the man of the people as Wigan versus Wakefield, at the MSC big game day. <laughs> Wagger's game day this week. We're in Wigan Town Centre. We've heard the George goes off. There's plenty of Wakefield fans on the streets, but I'm going to have a quick chat with all the Wigan fans, see how confident they are to beat Wakefield today. And then we're going to go down to the stadium. Let's have a look. Oh, let's get in, let's get in. Hey, Kev, another Wakey fan. It's full of Wakey. I thought I were in Wigan. We're in the George in Wigan pre-game take on Wakefield. Are you surprised how well they've started this year? Not really, no, but you know what? They, they were last year and I think they'll get better, but I'll tell you what, they, after the last two batterings, it's their game today, we'll get two points. Come on, Wiggy! I'm just having a chat with the bar lady here. She reckons John Smith's again, so I'm going to have to down another John Smith. Best party of Wigan? Yeah. Do you, do you come in here just for the part of John Smith? Yep. Let's have a sample. Do it again. Same again. Same again. <laughs> We're packing down in George. Come on, boys. We're packing down. Right, I've done. Waggers game day, I downed a, I downed a pipe again because I've got to do it. How many years have you been supporting Wigan Warriors? 44 years. 44 years? 50. 50. Did you go to Australia? Yes. Yes. Oh no, not for the Wigan. Oh, I, went, I went for the World Cup. World Cup. I went for the World Cup and for Wigan. Did you? Yeah. That, that's some commitment. That's what I love about Wigan fans. What brings you to the George? Apart from vodka oh, or... Double vodka lemonade! She started early. Are you? Are you here for Mother's Day? Are you a mother? Uh, yes, I am, but my daughter's dumped me. That's she? So I'm in it yesterday. Happy Mother's Day, I'll give you a kiss. Happy mo are you a mother? I'm a mother. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Happy Mother's Day to my mum as well, Diane Godwin, and my wife, Kim Godwin. Happy Mother's Day. Jonesy, listen to this. Great up, Wigan, lad. Wayne Godwin. Wayne Godwin, I was what? Great. Great to Wigan Jones, I told you I used to play a game. How do you think this season will go? I'm pretty confident, tell you the truth. We're, we're one of them teams what come when we leave here late, like. Yeah. We'll just build up now, and then we'll, I think we'll, but don't get me wrong. We're not, we're not firing on all cylinders yeah. yet. Right, just having a little look around Wigan Town Centre. I recognise this street on my left here. Some plenty of bars, yes. I know I won't forget it, King Street. What a night out, win, lose or draw. When I played at Wigan Warriors, we were down King Street. There were some outstanding bars. Outstanding, absolutely packed. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. England have named the Knights and the Elite Squad. Tom Johnson. Absolutely. We're Finally. Back, we're back Matty Ashurst. Exactly. Uh, Danny Kermon tweeted this week, Matty Ashurst should have been in that squad. Come on, Danny Kermon. Oh, yeah, I love you, Kermon. Oh, oh, we love you, Danny Kermon. Oh, yeah, oh, singing a song, walking in a Kermon. There's only one, Danny Kermon. You're 
like Gasco! We all like Gasco! We all like Gasco! We all like Oh, the water! The water! See what the damage is for parking. Four quid. Four quid. I wish I'd have just I wish I'd have ran here. Got Wigan Half Marathon next week, I could have run here. I'll tell you what, pants down, Wigan. Pants down. Stadium. He used to absolutely love playing in front of this crowd. Get closer for that, Josie! Am I, I going to be on telly next week? Of course you are! We're at the DW Stadium and this game is that big. We've got royalty, we've got the Queen. Right, pre game. Do you know anything about rugby, the Queen? Nothing. <laughs> against Wigan, Ben Jones Bishop, outstanding game. They've gone quiet, they've gone quiet, Wigan have scored in the corner. No trouble. Train our way, all the back up. Oh, train our way. Loud it, loud it. Train our What a guy. When Wakefield till I die. I don't know why I am I shot up. The Wakefield fans have travelled well today. What's your name? Jack, do you travel home and away to every game? Uh, uh, some games. Some game. Who brings you? Uh, my mum and my dad what, who, Who's your favourite player? Tom Johnston. Cole, who's your favourite player? Who's your favourite player out of Wayfield? Tom Johnston. Tom Johnston, they all love Tom Johnston. Just being picked for England as well. Chevy Sharks, plenty here today. What have you been doing? Uh, well, we've been working out. Um, well, we went out with the players in twos. One, we were both on each side. I bet that were awesome. So you, you went out with the players today? Yep. Who organised that, your coach? Yes. That's awesome. I, do you love rugby league? Yep. Wigan supporters, I take it? Yep. Who's your favourite ever player? Sam Tompkins. Look at that. They come all the way to Wigan. I knew they'd be eating pies. They start them. They start them at a young age over here. They start them this age and that's why it goes all the way through just pies 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 and then the turn it to guys up this guy is a legend himself i miss this guy but what well, best mascot i'll put it out there the best mascot in super league right here oh the score we're gonna score the bundle up Do you, do you love Rubbi Yeah. Who's your favourite presenter? Uh, I see you. Yeah, Simo Josie, I've done you again. Wagga. Who's your favourite Wigan player? Morgan Esquire. Morgan Esquire, what a player. Who's yours? Burgess. Right, another question. It's Mother's Day. What have you bought your beautiful mum? I know. What have you bought? I bought her a, a like, teddy and a candle. Oh, what a guy. What do you buy your mum? Um, Flowers? Yes. To all the mums. I've had that many kisses. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you very much. This is what I love at Mother's Day, but the rugby league is on. Mum, I told you you could have come to the rugby with me, but she didn't want to come.
Wigan and England captain and a gentleman lockers. Mother's Day. Can I borrow them because I didn't get my wife anything. You Thank you. Told you, Kim, I'd get you some. I'm on the way back. <laughs> lockers, today's game, Wakefield coming into this in great form, four out of four. Yeah, yeah, it was a big, big chance for us today. We, um, we had a couple of good wins, a couple of patchy, patchy performances, but yeah, to get a win against an informed side like Wakey today was it was impressive. It was good for us. It was a good, good kind of pat on the back as well that we do some good things. You play Witness, which we're featuring next Saturday, so that's going to be a tough game as well. Yeah, like you say, Witness really tough game as every game is in Super League, I think this year. So we'll be looking at that uh, preview this week, and like I say, if we can keep that ratio four from five going, won't be too far away this season. Pat on the back, Greeks, 350 games. What do you remember from all them games, mate? <laughs> do you remember much from that shot? <laughs> yeah, no, we'll have to ask me in the morning when we'll I have a better look at that shot. Uh, do you know what? I think I knew he'd been coming for a little bit, and then um, somebody mentioned something today and said he was 300, and I thought, someone's, someone's just taken two that. years off my career. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we ended up with uh, a nice bit of sticky tape uh, off Matty Ashurst on my shirt, so pretty proud of that. Um, Massive. Next one's 400, I'll go for that. Great win today. You go to Casford next week, next Sunday, down the lane. You, you must love playing there, Lockers. Oh, it's bouncing in. It's always bouncing. <laughs> I know the, the Wigan Speckies love going over there. I love the atmosphere that, that the jungle brings. And yeah, it's, um, yeah, it'll be a good one. They're, they've been a little bit similar to us, some good results, uh, some scratch performances. But yeah, I think both sides will be going there looking to get a good result. You know, Casford's probably one of my best places to go and play away. You know, the fans are, you know, stood right next to you. You can hear every word, they, you know, they call you. Great setup. It's all it is. It's, it's, it's good, uh, great atmosphere. And, you know, we'll be looking for another another win there to, you know, lead us into some good stead at the Easter period. Congratulations on your nights and win, mate. Well done. Let's go to work. Rugby fan camp fueled by LD Nutrition. <laughs> right, game. 30 points to 18, you've beaten Wakefield Trinity. Joe Burgess, at trick. I met you in the pub. You called it. Yeah, well, I told you Sam Tomkins was coming back to form and he set four tries up today. I could have scored then what Joe Burgess scored. Oh. Apart, apart from the third one. Great game to be fair. Wayfield threw it about well. Joe Burgess hat trick. Who were your man of the match today? I'd go with Burgess just on the fact that he got the hat trick, but I think um, Escaray had a really good game as well. That's great. Oh, I'm liking him since he's back. I love him. Give him free kisses <laughs> out all day. Happy yeah. Mother's Day, Mum. Yeah. And a hug. See you, mate. Yeah, I'm filming. Oh, oh, what's the about? Oh. Easy, easy, easy. Oh, who's your man of the match today? Joe Burgess. Joe all Burgess. The, all day long. They did all right, mate. We had a few lucky calls go our way. That first in Ben Jones Bishop, a bit dubious, that. Yeah, did it, it, did, it looked it, Well, that was both tight. Fine. Second, and you could tell what, because he just grubbed it on like he wasn't interested, didn't he? But I think first in. We got away with a lot, but you do at home. Home teams do win penalty count a lot. Yeah. I think referee standards need to book up a bit. Uh, it was a close game at the start, but we just started to put pressure on in the second half. It just they cracked under the pressure and started giving away penalties. What about Tony Club's hit? Do you reckon that were a bit juvious or not? Shoulder. Shoulder. <laughs> had a far for you call the shoulder. Can't run without your head. You can't run without the head. Split him with Piper. Do anything. Build on to next week, you play my hometown club, Casford Tigers. That's going to be a tough contest, they've beaten Salford. I can't speak. I can't speak, they all love Morgan. <laughs> proper oh, team, we're going to... Proper team, that, proper team. What does? Wakefield, nah. Come on, run away. Nah. I've still got it. Come on. <laughs> shot, shot him. See how Jones is, I'm making a comeback. Tom John Stone, who? Oh, go on again. Tom John Stone, who? Were you confident going into this game you could beat Wakefield? Yes. Do you play rugby, you too? You look like rugby players. No. No, come on, get playing. Join the team for me. Do you play? Yeah. Where that? St. Jude's. St. Jude's. Good club. Some good players produced out of there. Awesome. Are you off up to King Street tonight? A few beers? No. I'm Celebrate. Not, no, I'm not. Working I'm driving. tomorrow. He's driving! What doing? did he get you for Mother's Day, more importantly? Never mind the result. Um, what did he get you? He's got more important things to think about. I got, oh, I got me not get anything. I got me message. That's all. I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. Today. Two tries. Two tries. Should have been four. Should have been four. Should have been four. Should have been four. Do you think they were close calls? Yeah, well, I'm biased. He scoring tries for fun. Scored two last week against Huddersfield. You must be proud of him. Very, very. Bish, I've got to do it, mate. I'm sorry. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you. Sorry, Bish. <laughs> i got another one. That's my 21st kiss of the day. 
Happy Mother's Day to all your lovely mums. Wagga is getting, it's just getting worse and worse. Fan cam, he's just mental. They love him. Mate, they love he's him. the man of the people. He's the man of the people. Michael Shenton, 12 years, uh, obviously, at Castleford. He's played with some great players in his career, but he picks his 1 to 13. I'm Michael Shenton from the Cast Tigers. This is my 1 to 13 all time best players. Uh, I'll start off with fullback. It's Luke Dorn. He, uh, the, he might not, I kind of people think he's not as good a player as Zach all, all around, but for me personally, he developed my game so much. He, um, he spent time with me. He, he, we had this looking at all different centres across, across in the NRL as well. He cut footies up for me. And he just gave me great tips on how to improve my game constantly and he brought the best out in me. And I think he's kind of the reason I am the player I am today. So uh, at one, it's, it's Luke Dorn. Right wing. Uh, playing at Cass and the, the style of the play, I play with some pretty, some pretty special players. But the guy I've gone for on my right wing isn't a Cass player. He's a, uh, he's a Saints player. And I played with him when he made his debut at, at Saints, uh, Tommy Makinson. And I know he gets some raps, but I still think he is one of the most underrated players in the league. He's one of the toughest players to play against. Uh, defensively, he comes up with big plays all the time. He can shut plays down, he's intelligent, but it, the way he finishes tries and, and his, it, the work rate coming out of the yardage and stuff, he's, he's up there and uh, I don't think nobody had turned down at Tommy Makinson. I go on my left wing, I've had some pretty wing, special wingers outside me. Uh, I really think Greg Eden's got some great potential. I don't think he's even reached it yet. He does some pretty special things and he scored some amazing tries for us last year. And, and I really enjoy his company as well. Uh, he keeps me entertained on the wing. He's a bit of a, I call him the plant pot. He, uh, he's pretty out there, but he's always good fun. And, and I, I can't wait to see what, when he reaches his potential, how good he can be. I've got to go on my right centre, Jake Webster. Uh, we, we've got a great partnership going on here at Cass now, going on for five years. We've been playing together and uh, and it, I think it, he's improved as, as he's come to cast on, under Daryl Powell and, and he's a great person to have in the team, he's, he's always for the boys, uh, all the fans love him and it's because he comes up with big stuff, he comes up with big plays, defensively he's a rock. On the other one, um, I've gone for a player I play with St. Helens, uh, Francis Melly. I know he's known for a, a winger but he, when I played at Saints, he had to cover, cover in the centre and he did a, a great job. And he went to Salford as well and he, they made him play centre there and he did some, he did some awesome stuff there. So, uh, Randy's just a great personality as well. The most driest person I've come across. Uh, for my scrum half, it's got to be Luke Gale. Uh, I just think since he's, he's, come, he's come to Cass, he's grown and now he, he's a complete kind of package as a half-back and into that, the England scrum half. So, uh, Gale is in there. He, if you want to know about Luke Gale, just follow him on Instagram and he'll just talk himself up all day, so uh, he can do that enough for himself. Uh, standoff. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick with the, the cast one now. The, I think the partnership between Luke Gale and Ben Robertson we had last year and years past, when they're firing together, they just complement each other so well. And uh, when you're playing the team, when they are back, you've got someone like Luke Gale who can control the game, come up with big plays, but then Sometimes when the pressure's on Gailey, Ben's great at taking it off him and, it, and, he's, and he's so dynamic, running-wise, powerful, explosive. Uh, he's a big boy, so obviously he's a good defender as well. So uh, he just brings that different kind of, not many teams have got a Ben Roberts in it. Number eight in my team, uh, front row. I'm going to go Grant Millington. Um, it's a bit soft, but... <laughs> he, he won't watch this, nobody. Um, but no, he's a great player and, and he, he creates opportunities as a, as a front rower. He's intelligent, he's a bit like a halfback and he plays halfback for us at times when we, when we say we're getting injured or something and he does a great job at it. So uh, he's, he's got to be in there and he's a good friend of mine as well. So he, he's in there. Uh, at nine, the bloke I've gone for uh, is James Roby. Uh, probably out of all the players in this team, he's the best player I've played with. He's uh, an unbelievable, unbelievable player, uh, athlete, but knows the game, smart. Uh, I don't think anything needs to be said about James. I think everyone rates him up there, so uh, for me, Robes have been my number nine. 
So number 10, uh, James Graham, uh, skipper. He'd be the captain of my team. Yeah, he's one of the best players you'll play with. He's that passionate. Uh, I think every he wants to be scared of like basically giving it to anybody on the team. He didn't even give it to a coach. That's what you love about him. It don't matter. As long as you're doing a job, you've got to do your job for the team. He don't care who you are. He, he, he kind of holds everyone accountable for, for doing it. But you know he's giving absolutely everything every time he takes the field. I'll go uh, right side back rower first. Um, uh, there's another bloke I played with at Saints. Uh, I think he was about four years at Saints before he, he went back to the NRL. Uh, Sia Soliola, uh, just a machine. He's just absolutely belt people. And you just think, you, you cringe at some of the times you do, the squeals coming out when, he, when he's hitting people. He wouldn't always get it right and you'd be a bit shocked, but his intent to go and hit people and hurt people, and then he'd carry, and he'd carry strong. My next one is my left, left side back rower. Uh, this is the guy I play with at the moment, uh, Ollie Holmes. It might be a bit of a shock, um, but um, uh, he's one of them blokes, until you play with him, you don't realise how good he is at all the little bits he does. And in ours, we still see people now in video who will run at him. And you're thinking, don't run over the Ollie Holmes onto his right shoulder, because he's going to dip and bend you in half. <laughs> and he'll do it to absolutely anybody. Uh, so. And when you see your, your back rower doing that to, to people, he's always working, he's always, he'll, he'll slice people down and he'll, he does all the extra efforts. Uh, not too much of the, of the flash stuff really, but rugby league's built on those kind of players and if you're one of those players, you're not winning anything. Loose forward, uh, I didn't play with this guy too many times, but at an international level, uh, he, he's, he's been a skipper for England, still is. Um, he's. He, he's similar to what he'll absolutely bend people. Strong carries, he's, uh, there's a front rower, you never know if he's, he's carrying into line, if he's gonna pass out the back or he's gonna carry over somebody into somebody. He, he's, he's probably the best of the game at that, with, at deceiving, passing, picking, who to run at, when the game needs lifting, and Sean Lachlan's my loose forward, and that's my 13. Some interesting picks there, Jonesy, from Shenny. But you, you're in, you're in cast soon. The day after, yeah. the big game, doing your new play. Yeah. Tell us about your play. Doing a play called Playing the Joker, and I played Dave the Doorman, Eddie Waring's Minder Doorman. There's only three people in this play, and uh, long story short, it's about a guy who's aggrieved at his late dad's recent death, and Eddie Waring didn't come to the funeral, so he comes to meet Eddie. He's got one of his old trilbies, and he pulls a gun on him, and I have to go. So pulls a gun on him. Yeah, I guess it, but it's a comedy. It's it is a bit of a comedy. It is funny. Anyway, uh, I'm at Castleford on the 24th of uh, March. And where, which, where in Cass? Which at Cass Ground. At the Castle Road. Road. So um, wow. we've got Luke Gales coming along, Paul McShane's coming. Um, just come along and, and see a great play, have a great conversation, we'll have a Q&A afterwards and talk about the great game again. Uh, right, team of the week time. Um, Sam Tompkins, uh, the fullback. Uh, on the wings, Ben Jones, Bishop. Joe Burgess, Atrick Hero. Centres, Callum Watkins and Matt Percival. In the halfback, they got Richie Myler and Danny Richardson. Scott Taylor, Grant Millington in the front row with James Roby. A hooker, Ollie Roberts and Benjamin Garcia in the second row and Sean O'Loughlin bringing up the rear. Most thank you for coming in today. Absolutely outstanding. You've got to sign our table before you leave, please, if you if you would. No worries. Do not forget this weekend at Rugby M Live, Saturday afternoon. Wood, are you back as well, man of the people? Yeah, looking forward to it again. It was a real, um, you know, eye opener. I think for a lot of people who watch again because it was, you know, a really intense game. Some some good players uh, playing. I think that set the standard now. So hopefully another uh, another good class this week. Big thanks for everyone watching tonight. It's been another great show. We'll see you on Saturday for Rugby M Live. Don't forget, keep it locked. Keep it here. Rugby M Free Sports. <laughs>